Okay. Keon, what's your ick of the week? Ugh, I am at the point that I can no longer stand TikTok game filters. Mm. I can't stand it because it's all over my damn page. And I don't give a damn if mm. you have 300,000 likes on you playing a stupid ass game. It's getting boring. It's tired. <laughs> and then everybody's freaking playing these games. Mm. Why are we watching this over and over? I wish that I could put on my page, ban this specific type of video. If they're playing a game, I don't want to see it. They're doing a freaky little filter and be like, look at this new filter. I don't want to see it. Mm. I did like the old person filter for a second until I put it on myself. <laughs> and then I realized that I'm just going to have to die before then because I'm not going <laughs> to handle that. I'm not going to handle that well. You Damn. Know? But yeah, I, I mean, it's just, it's it's sickening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll slay. I hope they get rid of them for you. Do you feel that way? I never use them. So I actually don't. I don't know. They don't get queued up for me very often. So oh. it's not something I see all the time. Well, maybe they know I hate it. They must know that you hate it. And they're just like, pew, 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 pew. Right. Just like how you were playing around with their little soundboard before this episode started, trying to annoy the hell out of me. I wasn't trying to do anything. Mm. I was trying to train you like a Navy SEAL. Mm. Learn. Maybe that's what TikTok's trying to do for you. Per. What's that's your ick of the week? <laughs> My ick of the week is people singing songs and or writing songs to their lover. I think it is not cute at all. And I've seen too many terrible performances. I don't know if you watch Love is Blind. I've seen several attempts of songwriting on there. Mm. I've seen it at weddings. I've seen it in random public spaces. Mm. I've seen people just wanting to show off, oh, this is a song I wrote for you in their car to their boyfriend or their girlfriend. I don't know if I'm just like the ultimate hater <laughs> of this, but I cannot stand it. Yeah. And I wish people would stop. Oh my God. Like, I kind of like, I like the Taylor Swift effect of like, oh, like I wrote a song about you maybe post breakup or right. like you inspired the song after the fact. And even like, actually, you know what? I don't mind you writing a song about your lover if you're a musician and like you play it to the crowd. Right. There's something about the intimate sharing one on one of a one on one song of yeah. I wrote this for you and I want you to sit here and listen to it or I'm going to send you I'm going to text you something I created on GarageBand as an act of love. No. I'm not feeling the love at okay, all. Okay, so what would happen if somebody did that to you like let's put yourself in that scenario i know i'm way too nice i would definitely pretend like i loved it regardless of how i actually felt but i would hate it on the but, inside but would you break up no not necessarily i do think it's a turn off though oh really yeah it's like if that happened to me yeah i would lose trust <laughs> instantaneous i'm like you're fucking weird as hell oh my like God. for real no but no i'd be like what? <laughs> I feel like such you a You're just singing to me right now? Ugh. And don't even get me started on If it were couples. bad. Because like if it... Yeah, no, the weddings? No, couples who sing together at their weddings. Oh. And it's not even like... I haven't oh. seen people do it together, no, but they I've do seen that. one performing for the other a lot. No, I've seen it. Like they're sitting there. They're actually like not even on stage or on the dance floor. And they're like, my love, there's only you in my life. And then you do that. The only thing that's right. Oh my God. Do that's, it at the Grammys, not at your wedding. Don't do it at the Grammys either. Well, if you can get invited, do okay, it there. Sure. You know? No. I mean, like Tim McGraw and Faith Hill, they can do it. Right. No, I But would, not at their wedding. I'd get, yeah, no. The wedding thing is like funny to me. I'm like, I've warmed up to the dancing, like when people want to do a little dance performance for the other person, but the singing just does not do it for me. Oh, it's too much. I just like... It's just not cute. Like, especially if it's bad. Mm -hmm. Like, I've seen some really bad ones where it's like, Oh, you know that you've got my heart. You are everything to me. Terrible. Off pitch. All these terrible, terrible songs. <laughs> but people feel like they're pouring their hearts out. And so you have to receive it. Right. I mean, you can't sit there and be like, Ugh, make a face. You have to know. like... Oh my God, but this this came up for me because I was recently in a session with an artist who I shall not name who had someone do this. Right. And like this man, this man, I don't want to put their business out there too much, but she was dating this like NBA star. Mm. Very tall, damn near seven foot, okay? Mm. Imagine a seven foot tall NBA player pouring out their feelings via song. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. I feel like such a hater though because she really loved it. Right. She was like, oh my gosh, this was so sweet. Right. But this is your ick. 
It is. It You're is. Specific it is. But I was being a hater on her. Right. Because like I, I like tried not to laugh, but I was listening to it and was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, isn't like, wouldn't you just die if somebody did that for you? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In a different way. I would completely. Yeah. It might off turn into myself. a homicide as well. Scary. It's definitely not my thing. Sorry about it for everybody who's into it. If you guys like that. Good for you. Yeah, just keep it to yourself. But like, if you have feelings for me, never, ever, ever perform it via song. Take that thought straight out your mind. Amen. Straight out your mind. That shit would make me shrivel up and dry up. It's the least attractive thing I think somebody could do. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) It's not hot. I was like trying to think like, is there a singer or is there an actor or somebody who I would like, oh my God, I'd be so excited. And I was like, no, I just don't like it. I just think it's so awkward and not cute. Yeah, I get, if if it once again if it was in a stadium or a performance, perhaps I think it's more bearable for me. Okay, if I'm if I'm what's her name, uh, Dakota Johnson, and Chris Martin is okay. on stage and shouts me out via the song, and it's like my right. universe is here. Right, that's cute. Right, I'm into that. Right, but like, I wrote this song for you, and I just want you to hear it. Yeah, and no. you sing it. Be a guitar at a campfire? Or in our living room? No. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Mommy. Get in the bed and let's party. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Mommy. Get in the bed and let's party. Hey, 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 hey. So recently, I was hanging out with some people. And funny enough, they were going through their icks. And one of the girls brought up that her number one act is men in golf's clothing. <laughs> so specific, so rude. Okay. But I would like to know your thoughts because I feel like I know quite a bit of men, usually over the age of 40, mm-hmm. who constantly wear golf clothing. It's right. never bothered me. Mm-hmm. However, I can kind of understand why it would be an ick. I kind of think it, it it is usually affiliated with a certain type of personality. Right. I, but as somebody who spent a lot of time in the golf world, I was wondering if you would weigh in. Well, as a professional in this field, yes. as somebody who was forced into golf clothing, yes. I can see I can see how that's icky for certain people. Yeah. Like so other people, I think for me specifically, mm-hmm. I can understand with the little shorts and the little tucked in, and there's always four of them, and the four friends, and then they all have that little freaking dangling glove on their hand. That's too much. However, if they had pants on, for some reason, that does a lot better for me. Or if, it, or if it was like untucked. But I get more of an ick from when there's like three of them in a row. And then one of them's wearing like a button down like Hawaiian shirt. Oof. And the other ones are like in their little golf outfit. Or mm-hmm. oh, when the hat's a little too big with oh. the golf outfit. And it's just not fitting oh. right. That's the thing. It's like, to me, I get I get it. But I, I genuinely think... The actual problem is it's just not looking good in general. Yeah. It's not fitting. You know what I think is kind of funny is like some people or some men treat golf clothing as like casual and some I feel like treat it as formal. Where it's like Uh I've definitely seen like I've definitely been to family functions where I think men think they're dressing really nice. Right. And really you've got on a golf polo with some slacks. Right. And like I can't say that it's not nice, I guess, but like it's not formal. It's a costume. It is in a way. way. But, like, also, I mean, it's all a construct. What's formal anyways, you know? Sure. Right? Sure. Like, I don't know why we all got to be wearing suits all the damn time. It's like, we we can invent rockets, and we cannot figure out another outfit for a guy. That's a little crazy to me. You know? But, I mean, but there are nice button-ups, though, you know? Sure. It doesn't have to be a golf polo. No. You know? But some people, like, that's their max. Yeah. That's their thing. Yeah, no. I mean, but we know it's not that because you like you can't really wear a golf polo to a wedding. I mean, certain people you can, but but a lot of people you can't. <laughs> no, definitely not. I yeah. mean, I had a friend recently wear a golf polo to like a movie premiere. Yeah, so you could say that's underdressed a golf polo in a movie premiere, but then at the same time you'll see some dude with like a fucking see through shirt and their nipples are out. And I'm like, is that more? Right. Is that more professional? Perhaps not. I don't think so. (laughs) I don't know. I think that maybe. Hear me out. Maybe we should normalize nipple pasties on men. Whoa. Is that the most feminist thing I've ever said in my life? You're not. Now you're saying pasties, not 
just mm-hmm. nipple covers. Well, what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think pasties and I think like the tassels, like the fun. No, not that. Like a Band-Aid. I see. Right. So. Because I'm just like, some people's nipples are just like, they're unappealing. It doesn't really matter which way we're going. I'm like, just because you are have dude nipples, it's still a nipple. Especially when the little hairs are sticking out of it. Ah, cover that shit up. What? Don't let that out. Let's talk nipples for a second. Why? This is so interesting. Don't talk about mine. Don't talk about mine. I well, <laughs> if yours get thrown into a conversation, it might just happen. But I think that's kind of funny because right. I've never thought about like a man being insecure about their nipples. So mm. I'm just very curious, like from a male perspective. Right. Have you had moments where you've been insecure about your nipples? About my nipples specifically? Mm-hmm. I think that. If, if we're going to really deep dive into it, like if this was a therapy session right it now, is. which it seems like it's turning it into, is. I don't know if I'm <laughs> the biggest fan of nipples in general. You know? For anyone. I just like, I don't think I've ever been like, oh my gosh, I love nipples. Like specifically, I just love nipples. To me, it's like the same as like a booty hole. I'm like, do I love that? Okay, but... It's there. But let's go back to the question. Have you ever felt insecure about your own nipples? Is that a yes? But what I'm saying is, do I love nipples? I don't know if I love them. I'm so confused. What? Tell like, me. I think I would have a lot of personal growth if I found out that I love my own nipples. That would that would go a long way. Would I say insecure? Yes. Not necessarily. Okay. I just don't know if I, I don't, I just don't love them. Okay. But you've had moments where you've been like, oh my God, my nipples today. Oof. Oh, yeah. Okay. If they're in certain positions. Okay. Yes. Let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dive, dive deep. So, okay. Typically, is it that the size, the color, or the erectness of said nipple oh, is what nipple. is bothersome? Um, wow. Definitely not the color, I would say. Okay. Great color. <laughs> it's like... The best color. <laughs> um erectness uh i don't have feelers i don't know if you know what feelers are that's like when that shit just like you know they call those feelers got, that's what i call it it's got inches you it's because it can feel you when you're getting too close that's a feeler <laughs> um those are not my favorite either okay. <laughs> you know where you could like yeah okay oh so, yeah i don't know i i don't know about myself specifically i think i actually probably have standard standard nipples sure you know okay all right so, all right. I mean, I just was going to say, like, when you sit there and you, like, are insecure about them, what, why is it? I think it's like with anybody, perhaps, or maybe it's just me. Some days your nipples can show through your shirts and it's fine. And some days it's not fine. You know? Okay. Some days I don't want that. You know what's funny is I don't think I've ever noticed a man's nipples, like, showing through a shirt unless it was, like, intentionally see-through. You're not looking hard enough. I guess. Yeah. Kind of funny though. Yeah. Huh. Kiki, would you consider yourself to be somebody who is mentally unwell? Yeah. Anxious? Mm hmm. Suffering constantly from distractions? Um, yeah, but what about you? Oh, me? Never. <laughs> okay, why? Because I've been drinking a little something called Day One. Do tell. Day one is simple, it's delicious, it's got 20 milligrams of CBD, Mm. and zero calories. Okay, that sounds a little bit relaxing and refreshing. Oh, it absolutely is. You gotta try some. Use code Daddy Mommy for 25% off. Have you ever started a conversation you just regretted? (laughs) Because that was that for me. I was so excited to make you unpack it. (laughs) I just don't know what we've accomplished fully, but I guess I don't love it. You know, I feel like there are some things you just don't think about regularly, and it is nice to be, mm-hmm. you know, reminded of said things right. on occasion. Right. I've never thought about male nipples like that. Right. So, fun. Because they're just weird. Like, what is that? I mean. I don't know. Let's move on from Makes there. me think of that, like, uh, what is it? Meet the parents. I've got nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? Oh, yes. Great scene. Same thing. Amazing. Yes. Actually, I don't want to get too into it, but I actually, I I think it's actually possible to make a man lactate. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. It's not impossible. Whoa. Yeah. It's, it's, ha- I, I are don't we have- talking science? Or no, 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 no. We're talking, no, no, no. We're talking science, but I don't have my notes on me right now, but I know that with enough stimulation, I think it's an overtime situation. You can get the male nipple to lactate. <laughs> and this came from a medical uh, personnel, this information. 
I don't know how you do it, but if any of y'all like can do that, I guess let us know. Wow. Oh, the step by step. I have a fun question. <laughs> Are you going to ask me if I can do it? No, oh. I don't know. Thoughts, I don't know. But if you could, right. would you best breastfeed your children? Um, No. Okay. If I, like, you're saying, like, if I could do that, like, maybe if we were in a, if I was in a relationship with somebody who was like, it's your turn. This is only fair. Yeah. Would you? Sure. Be- wow. But only because, like, that's so rude. <laughs> like, if to we can no. both do it. Whoa. Rude to say no, but would I want to do it? No. Why not? I don't want my... <laughs> Listen, you freaking... I'm sure most of the mothers out there know that breastfeeding is not fun. That little bitch is biting your titties. But it is a bonding moment for you and the child. I'm a father. Yeah. Right. Fathers got to bond with their kids too. Imagine, imagine a grown adult saying, when I was a child, I actually breastfed from my father. Listen, it's already rare enough to say that a man can lactate. So I'm just saying if you could. But you don't bring the kids do into it? this. Don't bring the kids but into what this. Else are you, what else are you lactating for if not to feed a kid? I don't know. Ask Jesus. <laughs> don't ask me. God damn. <laughs> what the f*** is going on? <laughs> Should we move to my normalizer? Oh my God. <laughs> Yes, take me away from here. I take everything I said back. Your nipples are fine. I don't actually care that much. Okay, fucking go on my Instagram. You can see mine too. They're there. I don't give a damn. Screaming. Oh my goodness. I'm having so much fun today. Jeez. Um, well, mine's a much, much less spicy topic. Yeah. But- do you remember back when we were like in high school when we used to like wear, I don't know if you used to do this, but we used to wear like slippers, like house slippers to school? Like not Uggs, like actual house slippers. Like like Uggs, but like but like the flat ones, not the boots. You know what I'm talking about? I was wearing sneakers. So you never wore the slippers. Have you seen a man in high school wearing slippers? Yeah, a lot of us did it. It was what? like a thing. If y'all remember this or if you did this in your school, let me know. Maybe it's only colder climates. Keon grew up in Arizona where I'm sure it was too hot to yeah, wear slippers why would to we, school. Because yours are like fluffy and whatever. Yeah. Nah, we weren't doing that. No, we did it. But I like was thinking the other day, I was like, it would be so iconic if that was like a regular thing. Granted, living in Los Angeles, it also is way too hot for that right now. Right. But like imagine if like everybody was just like rocking slippers to events. Like, that would be amazing. Not just out the house, two events. Two events. Or, like, if it was just, like, a normal thing to be comfortable and wear a comfortable shoe all the time. Mm. You already know how I feel about high heels. I was like, this is already going. But I do, I'm also just a believer in, like, comfortable clothing. And I feel like, Mm. why not extend it to, like, your feet? Listen, the truth of the matter is, is that you can wear whatever you want. Yeah. Here's the thing about me. If everybody's going to choose to look comfortable... And I choose to look hot and everybody's looking at me. I just had a great night, even if I suffered a little. But that's my personality. I don't base comfort as my number one. Sure. You know? There's a time and a place for everything. Right. I'm comfortable at home. Actually, is that true? (laughs) Sometimes I got you some real nice slippers to wear at home. Sometimes I'm sweating. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't know. I think there's a time and a place for, uh, for comfort. Uh, when you say event, for some reason, my brain thinks like red carpet or like a party. Yeah, I think that'd be so fire. I think if it's a p- pajama party, perhaps. Yeah. Or like, once again, I think certain people can rock it. Right. Other people can't. I fully believe I could rock it. I just think that it would need to be cooler. Like, okay. like cooler temperature wise. Pull up on it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I'm gonna do it this winter. Yeah. Well, anyways, have you? can you tell today that I'm a little off? Um, <laughs> yeah, I can. can you, I can sense can something. Can you tell I'm traumatized? Yeah, I'm definitely like, picking up some trauma. Yeah, can you tell I'm just not doing well at all? Yeah, it seems like you're struggling. Yeah, so I have a theory with myself. Uh, uh-huh. Every once in a while, I feel like I just, I just dimension hop. I feel like I was in one timeline. Next thing you know, I'm in a different one because there's things that are just inexplainable to me. And the thing that's happened to me three times this week, because I've I've been having some plumbing issues, and I've had three different plumbers come over. They all don't have plumber's cracks. Not a single one of them anymore. Whoa. Nobody's crack is out. 
Whoa. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, those pants are low. So it was like, so I had three people in this house that have exceptionally low cracks working on my faucet when I'm like, I'm expecting something different. So now I'm sitting here thinking maybe in this dimension, there's no plumber's cracks. And I was just making that shit up the whole time. You got me thinking. Right. Perhaps the crack is the key to success. Right. Because if you've had three plumbers out in a short amount of time. Right. Something's not working. I needed three. Something's not working. Right. And perhaps it's because of the lack of the crack. Right. And it's like, you know how the crack works. It's like, I'm not trying to look at the crack. The crack looks at you. No, she just slips on out. She slips right on out with all yeah. her hairs and all. All of it. Yeah. And and they've been gone. Okay. So I'm like sitting here. I'm like, what's going on? Right. I'm like, where are these plumber's cracks? We need to get to the bottom of this. Then this is unrelated, but similar in my dimension hub. I thought I was having a mentee B the other day because I went to um I went to this restaurant, whatever, Soho House downtown. Uh-huh. And I haven't gone there in like a few months, maybe like two months. I don't know. I'm like driving there and I'm like, pull up. And I was like, this is actually crazy right now because I was like, every time I've gone here, I've gone into a parking garage. And when I say garage, like a fucking big tall parking garage, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I haven't gone enough that I'm like certain about things, but like enough that I'm like, this is really weird. Because then it was just a parking lot the other day. It Mm. was not a garage, a full ass structure is what I'm used to swirling around, right? Yeah. Just a freaking lot. And I'm like sitting there, I'm like racking my brain about it. I like go up, I'm thinking about it the whole time. I'm like, that's just crazy. Like, have you ever seen a parking structure disappear before? Mm. Ever? That's bizarre. Yeah. So then I actually, thank God I was with my mom, mother's love. Yeah. She actually asked the lady when we went out and she's like, hey, got to level with you. <laughs> she's like, was there a parking garage here? Wow. She said, yes. Wow. They actually demolished the parking garage and now it's just a lot. I was like, oh, thank God. Oh I was like, God. I was like mind blown by that. I was like, this is really weird. Wow. Well, yeah. this whole time you've been saying things that weren't what I was hoping you would say. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that this whole like weird interdimensional time travel <laughs> mm. was making you question things mm. such as both of our love and admiration for Luther Vandross. Oh, that's, that's where <laughs> we're going with it. Yes, we both love <laughs> Luther Vandross. How about Invisible by Clay Aiken? <laughs> We also both love Invisible by Clay Aiken. How about the cheeseburger song from Veggie Tales? We also both love the cheeseburger song by Veggie Tales. How about Love and War by Tamar Braxton? That's what. That's the one that's actually going to throw people off. I think the other three, <laughs> like certain groups of people, would know, but not the Tamar. Those song. are so random. I know it's yeah. so random yeah. for y'all's information. Keon and I yesterday were doing some work together, and randomly, all of these songs came to mind, and we both happened to know all of them. I think that's kind of psycho. You think so? I think it's crazy. I literally felt like this was like, I'm like, oh God, this is definitely a simulation. If we both know all these random songs, Veggie Tales, Mm -hmm. Luther Vandross, Clay Aiken, Tamar. Right. What do those four artists have in common? (laughs) Nothing. Nothing. The answer is nothing. Nothing. Larry the Cucumber and Tamar. Other than they have fans and you and I. Right. (laughs) That's the only thing they have in common. Right. Back to back whammies. That's crazy. Yeah. But anyways. No, that's not where I was going. But if you guys know any of those four people or any of those songs. Shout them out. Yeah. And it wasn't, you know, we were singing Dance With My Father. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Luther. I was a child. You know it. No, literally. What else? Veggie Tales. Oh, yeah. cheeseburger. Yeah. Let it out. Cause you're his cheeseburger. <laughs> we love that one. <laughs> we do. Tamar Braxton, Love and War. Somebody said every day <laughs> was gonna be sunny skies. Bizarre. Yeah. And what was the other one? If I was invisible. Oh, yeah. That one I feel like is a little obvious for some people. I don't think that one's obvious at all. Oh, really? No. Nah. I'm very interested to see how many people remember this. Yeah, they know it. We'll see. Yeah. We'll find it's out. It's kind of crazy, though, because we're only 18. Yeah, it's so bizarre. It's really bizarre to know all those oldies. So weird. Yeah. I was for a us. baby. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little baby. Yeah. Um, so I feel like we need to address the elephant in the room. Uh, the accusations I've been getting. Oh, I thought you were going to say my Michelle Obama arms today, but that's okay. No, what we, accusation? We weren't going to say that. What accusation? <laughs> um, so I've been accused 
uh, multiple times at this point for getting a nose job. Oh. I've been accused multiple times for getting a nose job. Big elephant in the room. Big elephant in the room. <laughs> and I just want to set the record straight. <sighs> Have you ever heard of Accutane nose? Never. Ever? Ever. Okay. So here's the thing about it. And I, and I can speak from personal experience. I did not know this going into it. Okay. So I am a, a person who did, I did sign that paper and I popped the pill. Okay. I popped the pill. Look at the skin. Clear. Clear. Was not before. <laughs> okay. Was not before. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that a side effect of actually taking Accutane over time is your nose shrinks. And I did not know that because like when you're with yourself every day, obviously like you don't, you don't think that that's happening. Yeah. If you look back at pictures of me from like a few years ago, yeah. it's literally double the size. What? Literally double. Yeah. The Accutane nose job is literally a thing. I'm not selling it. I'm not selling it. This Jeez. is not legal. This is the new Ozempic, people. Look out. <laughs> yes. It kind of is. Actually, it's kind of the original, really. The Accutane nose job was really going hard for a lot of people for a long time. And it's a very small niche community that knows about it. Mm. Yeah. I've never heard of her. You've never heard of her? No, but I do feel like you have a freakishly skinny nose. I do. Can we show the people what you can do with your nose? Yes. Show them. I do for, for a record. Do it. I do for record <laughs> have a double deviated septum. Um, so that has nothing to <laughs> Sounds do. Painful. That has nothing to do with the Accutane. No, it's not painful. I'm yeah. used to it. You just can't breathe. Yeah, I can't. I mean, it's not that weird. <laughs> I, I just have a very. God, no, it's not painful. You just can't breathe. Yeah, you just got to mouth breathe That's... from here and there. There you go. Yeah, I got that. Look at that. That's insane. And I thought this was normal. I can just hold this for the whole entire conversation. Everybody thinks I have a nose job, but what really happened was that's going to be the hook. That's terrifying. Yeah. You don't think I'm gorgeous like this? Mm -mm. Really? Mm -mm. What if I smile? <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that? It's giving serial killer. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's so, well, it's also like giving botched. I feel like I've definitely seen people. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I missed. <laughs> I remember answer. when Dwight from Real Housewives of Atlanta had to get his nose job fixed. Mm. And it was like, because it was just too skinny. Couldn't breathe. Mm. That's what that looks like. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, th I think I do probably at some point actually have to get it fixed. I mean, I, I've heard that's a thing. People with deviated septums. Mm -hmm. I think insurance covers it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But is it going to mess up your perfect Accutane nose? Well, it's not perfect. <laughs> Nothing in this world is perfect. <laughs> yeah, it is collapsing. Well, that's fascinating. <laughs> that's a very interesting Yeah, no, one. that's like an actual thing, though. Yeah. Yeah. Throwing me off. Okay. How do you feel about shorts after dark? Hmm. Um, okay. Shorts after dark on men. Sure. Okay. Uh, or just in general? I don't know. Okay. It's it's a topic that was broached in a group of people earlier. And I just wanted to bring it up here because, again, somebody said their ick was shorts after dark. Okay. What do you think? Um, I think that I'm going to give the ladies an out real quick. I think that women, I'm totally fine with you wearing shorts after dark. Especially mm. if it's like cute, you know, you're like... Depends where you're at. It's like casual. Because like also I think weirdly like with women, I feel especially if you're a heel girl, you can dress anything up with the heels. So it's like if you're wearing shorts and you got little jean shorts and you got a little heel on, whatever, like somehow you already look like you're ready to go out, you know? Sure. N nothing about that bothers me the summer, you know? Something about that's much, much more attractive mm. than uh, certain men who are wearing shorts after dark. Yes, that's weird. Uh, to me, it's odd. It's not my favorite. That's for sure. Um, do I think that the, here's the thing. Imagine this. You're with some dude and you're going out to the club and he got dressed and he's wearing khaki shorts. Oof. That's right. And he said, I'm ready. Oof. And you're all cute. You're ready to go. Face beat. Leg shaven. Or not. If you're one of the people who doesn't. And you're out. Now I'm thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. Um, you're out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only time I would say that it feels like appropriate, acceptable attire is, I would say, if you are vacationing in Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. Or at a beach wedding, maybe. No. You still think no? Linen. Khaki, like long pants. Well, linen would be the sleigh, but would I yeah. accept somebody wearing a khaki no. short to my wedding? Not in the wedding party. To your wedding? A beach wedding. Rachel, Rachel West. Stop. It's not that big of a deal. Oh my. No, it's a it's big just a guest. deal. No. At it's a beach not, wedding. No, it's not just a guest. Stop. It's not just a guest. That's a reflection on you that you would hang out with somebody who would show up to your wedding in shorts is crazy. If it's a beach wedding. You hanging out with there's somebody. There's an exception. There's no there's exception. An exception. There's no exception. Oh. If it's a rehearsal thing, sure. The actual wedding, you're going to wear shorts to a formal <laughs> event. No, but it's not formal, formal. It's a beach wedding. I feel like people don't wear like formal, formal to beach weddings. Linen. Khaki. Pants. What the hell is happening? Oh my God. I'm disturbed. Oh my God. I'm literally disturbed by I that. I don't share your passion. I have it, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> clearly, no, I don't like shorts after dark or at beach weddings or at formal events. Unless you're like fucking Billie Eilish and it's cool and I know your shorts are $2,000, then we can talk. All right. Any other time? No, I don't think that shorts are formal. Putting it out there. Do I think it's the most formal choice? No, I don't. Why? I don't know. Is it a societal construct I have? Maybe I don't like leg hair. I don't know what it is. Mm. I don't know what it is. Mm. I just don't think it's a formal look. Because I, like seeing your sock and stuff, like if your socks are out, that's formal to you? I mean, your socks wouldn't be out at a beach wedding. You'd be wearing a sandal, right? All right, we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We can move on. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I actually didn't. I, I actually do know somebody who wore sandals to my brother's wedding, and it was not a beach wedding. It wasn't a beach wedding. And he was wearing slides, but he also had a severe case of gout. Ew, going on. Do you know gout? Not really. You don't know what gout is? Not really. Okay, I'm gonna explain it to the best of my ability. Is that when you're like, it's like an ingrown toenail? No, no, no. So they call gout the rich man's disease. That's oh. what it is. So it's like this weird. It's like basically your foot or like a, a appendage. I think it can be in your hand and it's in the joints. It's almost like part, part of your joint like gets micro crystals in it and it flares up. Like it's an it's an inflammation thing of like micro crystals is how they describe it. And oh, it's dear. like if you moved your toe, it's basically all of those things would like scratch the inside of your cut, the inside of your foot. So it's like a huge flare up and it happens, they call it the rich man's disease because it or originated with like people who eat foods of like a wealthier uh, income. You get gout from caviar? No, it's not really from caviar. It's like from just indulging. I think it was, in it's what? from indulging. Indulging in what though? Like steaks. Nice foods? Yeah, like steaks and, really? and stuff like, don't quote me fully, but I, I know this. That's scary. No, it's. A, I like nice food. I think it happens to guys. Mostly. I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah. I think he might be. So he had to wear a sandal because he had the gout? Yeah. But he was wearing Gucci flip flops. <laughs> Period. So he did try. So he got about, you didn't curse him out for wearing No, I actually, I actually laughed. I mean, that was like hilarious. <laughs> like I was like, you can get, you know what I mean? If you give me a little reasoning, I'm here for it at the <laughs> okay. end of the day. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Should we move on to our favorite segment? I guess we should. Okay. Cancel me combo. Cancel me combo is a silly little term that describes the healthy debate of a mildly or extremely controversial subject wherein daddy and mommy participate in the beloved practice of rock, paper, scissors to select sides and then proceed to argue in favor of their signed position regardless of their personal beliefs. Disclaimer, neither daddy nor mommy are legally permitted to be canceled from these conversations. Today's cancel me combo is reading versus television. Mm -hmm. My grandmother has a lot to say about this. Right. My whole life she's had a lot to say about this. Right. A very passionate reader, avid reader. Right. I, on the other hand, raised in front of the TV, I would mm -hmm. say. Right. So we're going to rock, paper, scissors yeah. for reading versus TV. Yeah. If you win, you get TV. If you lose, you get reading. Right? If you win, you get, like, TV's better. Yeah. You're in favor of TV. Yes. Okay. I'm like, I'm wondering if we should, okay, we'll just, yeah. we'll just see where we'll it goes. see where it goes. Yeah. We're just arguing to argue. 
Period. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. I won. What do you have to do? TV. Is better? Yeah. Oh my God. We can trade if you want to. I know your heart lies with TV as well. Oh, it doesn't. Oh. It actually lies. I can't tell you where it lies. All right, period. No, I don't know <laughs> if I can do it. Seriously. <laughs> I have like nothing good to say. Okay, we'll swap. Do you why want don't to, we do you both, want to lose? Do you want me to both, pretend to lose? Why don't we both fight for TV? <laughs> <laughs> why TV is better than reading. <laughs> <laughs> I it's, it's okay. our show. It's okay. We can no. switch it up. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take books. I'll try to take books because, like I said, I have a family member who's very passionate about this. I'll try to give okay. maybe arguments that I think she would give. Okay, for all the book girlies. Okay. I appreciate that. Even I got though this you. is cheating. Yeah, it's not like we know. haven't done it before. We You're haven't. about to say we've never. We have never. They've done seen it. us do it before. We've literally never done this before. Such a lie. I'm actually getting very, very tired of people who pretend that reading is like the Lord's work. It's like so much better than watching TV. I just think that we need to go to the basics of it. To me, there's sure there's educational reading. I'm reading the encyclopedia. I'm learning something. I think you can learn from TV just as well. But the act of reading to me in general, and the people who fight for books more than TV is from people who don't realize it's also entertainment. Like at the end of the day, they're both technically non-productive, unless you're reading like nonfiction over and over and watching like documentaries, perhaps. But at the same time, I'm like, I just feel like you're actually just spending a lot of hours entertaining yourself in your preferred version of entertainment. Like I never really understood when people would be like, oh, I read 19 books over the summer. Get a job. (laughs) <laughs> work on something else. Okay, I, that to me, it's the same as I came back to school and was like, I watched 12 seasons of my favorite show. Genuinely, I don't get the difference. Are you exercising your brain more? Perhaps, I, haven't, I don't know if I've seen a study on TV versus reading explicitly, but also if you're really paying attention to the television and something good's happening, I'm sure that exercises your brain as well. Because like some people might be imaginative learners Seeing the words and picturing their head is what gets it locked in. And some people might be visual, visual learners and they need television. I'm just saying the people like how come there isn't a, well, there probably is movie clubs. There's definitely movie clubs. I was going to say book clubs or movie clubs. (laughs) There's really nothing like I'm not going to be reading. I don't even read the menu at a restaurant anymore. (laughs) I just say what's good here (laughs) or I have somebody I'm with do it. That's personal choice. But to just sit there and think that you're better than now because you love reading and somebody else doesn't read is just a little weird to me. Like, I'm like, you can like your thing, but just know. To me, you're just entertaining yourself. Mm. I do love moms and book clubs, specifically, because I just think that's fun and quirky. Like, I think that's so cool. It's like you get around with your girls and you all like <laughs> read a book together and like, and now you're talking about it. Like, that's crazy. And your mom. No, she doesn't do that. Oh, yeah. Well, no, you said moms in book clubs. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I and I love my mom as well, but I'm just saying them specifically get a hard fucking pass from me. I love those <laughs> bitches. I don't know why. <laughs> but at the same time, I know that that's just, you're just a gaggle of girls. You're just having fun and you're reading books. I rest my case. All right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Reading is elite. For those people who only sit around and watch TV and never pick up a book, I am afraid for you. I'm afraid that your brain is rotting. I'm afraid that you don't know how to properly entertain yourself. And I'm also afraid that you lack creativity. I think one of the beautiful things about reading is that it allows you to transport yourself into another world, perhaps learn a new skill, perhaps teach yourself something that you never knew about a different culture, a different land, a different person, history. So many things can be unlocked through reading. And yes, you could argue... TV has some of the same. However, think about how much imagination is required when you're entering a story. Think about the picture that you have to paint for yourself when reading a book. It's unlike any other experience. A TV, it's displayed right in front of you. Lazy. Lazy. If that's your form of entertainment, it's already done for you. Half the work's already provided. But with a book, you get to create that for yourself. If you're picturing a gorgeous woman on a horseback, if you're picturing a man in a boat, if you're picturing pioneers crossing the Oregon Trail, you get to picture all of that for yourself in your mind. You're creating that world. How imaginative, how creative. And then let's think about the satisfaction of completing a book. 
you don't quite get the same level of satisfaction when completing a series of a television show. I feel like to be dedicated to a book series, to be part of a book club, you've really accomplished something. What have you accomplished by turning on Netflix? What have you accomplished by clicking yes to a program on Hulu? Nothing. Nothing. And thus, I would encourage everyone to get into reading. It's a lost art, really. We really need to get back into books. I think that there's something so beautiful about the tactile feeling of a book in your hands and just turning a page. I mean, let's get back to books. Let's be book girlies and book boys and really explore the world of reading once more. You for that. (laughs) That was weird. That was really weird. weird. That makes me want to read. I'm not going to lie. Also, I'm like, I have to admit, I've so many times I've bought so many books that I just never read. Right. It's upsetting, actually. If you saw my little closet of books that I have that I've (laughs) never read, sad. Some of them are from college. Some of them are from adult life. And I just, I don't know that I'll ever read them. Ever. And why would you? My grandmother is always asking me if I have a library card. Some days I say yes. Some days I say no. That's cute. (laughs) I just don't want to admit that I don't have one. Why would you have? Because she thinks I'm a reader and maybe one day I will be again. Mm -hmm. I think the difference though too is like because when you're forced to read for so long in school, I Mm -hmm. feel like, I don't know, I lost a little bit of love for it. Mm -hmm. But I I did have series back when I was younger that I enjoyed. No, I... Agree. There were certain books I liked. I don't think that I don't not like books. I just, I, as a person like us who is a, is a busy person, like I'm yeah. a, I'm a very busy person and I have limited time for myself yeah. or like things I actually want to do. And I'm not ranking reading at the top I for know. myself. When I've tried yeah. to read, I feel like it just makes me tired. Right. I actually genuinely fall asleep. It's sad. Yeah. I literally will be like, okay, today I'm going to open up this book. I'm going to read a chapter. Right. I get like three pages deep and I'm ready to turn the lights off. Right. But even the fact like when you say that, right? Like, yeah. don't you kind of feel like if you read it, you'd feel proud of yourself? Yeah. But that's brainwashing to me. <laughs> like we were literally conditioned to think that reading was for some reason like good for us. I don't know why. I feel like it is, though, weirdly. It's good to learn how to read, to be literate. Yes, but also I just feel like it is exercising your brain in a way that just, like, watching a screen doesn't. I I mean, yes, that's absolutely fair. But I'm like, is it, like, the best? Like, do we need a complex? Like, do I need a pat on my back for reading The Hunger Games? (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I do. Maybe I do. And I actually did read it. Yeah, but like, I agree. I do feel like if I had more free time Mm -hmm. and like wanted a new hobby, reading could be cute. I don't know. I just could never like see, you know, like people would be like, oh, I'm on vacation and can't wait to crack open this book. (laughs) I want to crack open a fucking bottle of vodka. Every time. I respect that. Every time. In my free time. I'm trying to think less. I know, I know, I know. But But some people do think about it as like relaxing. Right. Yeah, I'm just not that person. There is a girl, though, on TikTok, though, that I do see. Like, she, like, she's, her whole account is, like, books. Yes. I don't know how I got her, actually. It makes no sense. I recently have been and watching she, a girl who does books she, as like, well. Yeah, she'll be like, these are the books I read this month. She'll be like, this one, that's horrible. This one, 10 out of 10, best thing ever. Like, it's just yes. so funny. And I know I'm never going to read them. I don't even pay attention to the titles. My favorite. I do like it. This one girl I follow on TikTok, April something, she was talking about how, like, she packed a bunch of books for her vacation with her fiancé. Mm. And then they get up to like check in at the airport and they were like, hey, like your fiance's bag is like too heavy. And he turned to her and was like, can we just like get rid of your books and I can put my stuff in there and we can like buy you new books. And she was appalled. She was like, absolutely not. But I thought that that was so funny that he like he didn't value them at all. He was like, let's just throw them away. Right. We'll get you new books. Right. She was like, this is my this is my vacation. These books. Right. So it meant a lot more to her. But some people really do just like love books like that. Right. I respect it. Just like some people love hiking. Some people like biking. Right. But I think it's fair to say I love books, but it doesn't need to like. You love um, books though. Me? Yeah. No. Oh, you're and just I, saying no, in general. I'm saying, I'm saying it's okay to love books, but to not think that you're better than thou because you read books. Oh, sure. To feel accomplished because you read a book. 
is is an interesting thing because I don't feel accomplished when I watch a TV series. Like I said in my argument. Right. Right. I don't know what you said, but I'm I just saying. I killed it. <laughs> if we were in school and they made us watch TV and that was the value system that was placed on us, we'd mm-hmm. be like, oh my gosh, I watched so much TV this summer. Look how good I am. That's all I'm saying. I'm just oh, saying. we're just a, got me thinking. We're a little brainwashed with it. It'd be so interesting if there was like a little reverse psychology going on there. Right. We made kids watch shows for everything and never let them like read books in school unless right. like, it was like, like if the same way that like a movie day in class was treated as like a reading day. Right. Like, ooh, we get to do a reading day today. Right. I wonder if kids would like books more. I don't know. As but, I mean, it obviously takes more brain power, clearly. It'd be so wrong. interesting. Yeah. Just food for thought. It's giving experiment. Oof. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was highly unlikable today. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> I, to you guys. I think it was very likable. I was very unlikable. It was entertaining. Today. It was entertaining. Perhaps. I don't think it was likable or unlikable, actually. It was just <laughs> entertaining. Yeah. Food for thought. <laughs> well, we've had so much food for thought today. I really enjoyed today's conversation. Did you? Rachel? I know. I've enjoyed watching you be in pain. I know. I feel like I definitely uh, came across as deranged today. Um, But, you know, that's your perception and mine as well. (laughs) (laughs) No need to self-deprecate. I think there was a lot to... Hey, ain't nothing wrong with... Ain't nothing wrong with being deranged. A little Delulu. It's a synonym for Delulu. That's right. There you go. Well, y'all say Delulu out there. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next time. Love ya. Say I love you to your mom. Well... You say it to your mom, but not about me. Perfect. I don't know her. Bye, children. Bye. (laughs) 